Oh god. Go away! Go away! Go away! Go away! Ah! Oh, there was two! Where did you come from? Okay then. What? <laughs> Welcome back to Subnautica. In the last video, we spoke about Subnautica 3, and I received a ton of feedback from all of you. I'm sure the developers are also very much aware of that feedback. I also got some very valuable feedback on concept art from the Return of the Ancients developers. I also have some news on the Ancient Leviathan. The Biter Leviathan surprisingly made a visit, and I have some information about Subnautica 3 as well. Uh, well, technically, Subnautica 3 isn't happening, but we're gonna get into that in a moment. How about you go suck a bag of d- In the last video, we got a preview of the Ancient Leviathan and how it would look. Now, funny enough, the top comment was a comment that I absolutely love because it was an agreement with my opinion that it should be more of like a crustacean-type creature than anything. Well, I'm happy to say it appears they are going that way as well, and it will be absolutely terrifying. And I have even more about it because not only are you gonna see this creature, for the first time in the history of Subnautica, we are about to hear the work in progress. Keep in mind, work in progress has to be changed and it's being shown to you now so you can actually influence where the sounds go. I'm going to spoil it now and let you know we're going to let you hear the Ice Dragon Leviathan as well. However, again, work in progress. We want to gather your feedback and, of course... All of these were made by Simon Chylinski, the original sound designer for this beautiful game. Before we jump into all that and the Subnautica 3 stuff, I do have a sponsor for this video because that's going to help pay for the Ice Dragon Leviathan, the Biter Leviathan, the Ancient Leviathan, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff. I probably... I'm going to mention something about Subnautica 3 after this too. But anyways, stick around for this and then we will be back. I just joined a community with over 4 million people who all want the same thing. A great game to pass the time. And I don't remember seeing you there. Click the link in my description and download Hero Wars. Join me and a hundred million other people who have played. I'm currently leveling Rufus right now. Whoa, easy Jaeger. It's not how it sounds. Rufus is actually a shield master hero who crushes everyone with his shield. That's not all. There's a couple more. Galahad is the first hero you get. Queen Mao has dragons. Mojo has totems of wrath. And don't get me started on this one. Their storms will hit the spot. On top of that, you can customize your heroes with skins that boost their stats, complete missions, and get rewards, along with awesome equipment. Earn coins and even soul stones for your best heroes. And with six game modes, you'll have lots of ways to gain XP and improve your skills. At level 30, you will gain access to guild mode, meaning not only does your guild fight other guilds, but you can fight using massive titans. And now's your chance to get five awesome heroes. Join the game now and get a super chest with a secret hero, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan the QR code or download the game from the link below in the description. And hopefully this time, I'll see you in-game. Alright, here are some of the sounds of the ancient Leviathan. Obviously, that was off in the distance. It's a far broadcast, but here is a close one. I think it sounds good, but I feel like it's missing something. I feel like it needs an iteration, so if you have any feedback to give on this, please let us know in the comment section. It was pretty well the idea of, like, what if a crab squid had a hard shell, you know? Like, that's that's kind of like the, the idea that we went with, and it's also supposed to be a huge leviathan, so... It was really, it's really difficult to make a sound for a creature that's kind of crab-like in nature. Like, you cut us some slack? <laughs> Anyways, this guy is a fan favorite, so much so that I completely underestimated his popularity, and it destroyed the frozen leviathan and the, what I thought was going to be very exciting community poll that I made. I thought for sure the Frollo was going to win, but no, you guys wanted the ice dragon leviathan. So anyways, I get to share the sounds with you. So here are some of the sounds we have designed right now for this guy. Again, work in progress. So that was from far away. Here is up close.
Again, I feel like it's missing something. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe a little bit more of a guttural growl. I mean, it is an underwater dragon, but I don't know where exactly to go from here. Unfortunately, I have no sounds for the Biter Leviathan right now. So you're going to have to sit tight and wait for those for now. But the Biter Leviathan is kind of low on the list compared to these more premium style Leviathans. Though I am excited for that too. And finally, I've spoken with the mod developers that will be creating these lovely Leviathans, and I have confirmed with them to an extent because it all depends on mod support and all that stuff too, but we do want to bring these horrifying creatures into the next installment of Subnautica, because if it's in a multiplayer setting, you can add these Leviathans in. I mean, the more the merrier, the scarier, the better. So we're going to try our best to bring these into the new Subnautica as well. Enough about future Leviathans. Let's jump into Subnautica 2. I had a conversation with Abraxas, one of the developers over at Unknown Worlds Entertainment. I told him I was doing a little bit of research into Subnautica 3, and I was just curious, you know, did they officially classify Below Zero as the second Subnautica, or was it just a sequel? He confirmed with me that Below Zero is, in fact, a sequel. When I tried to clarify with him, he basically said no comment on it. But what that leads me to believe is that with Subnautica Below Zero being a sequel, that means the next game that comes out that is a Subnautica game, depending on if that's also a sequel of Subnautica, is either going to be Subnautica, insert title here, or it will be Subnautica 2. Technically, we're not dealing with Subnautica 3. It might be the third Subnautica game, but it would not officially be Subnautica 3. We would be looking at Subnautica 2 because it's not a sequel unless it is a sequel. You get, you get the idea. It's a technicality, and that's pretty much that. Though he did tell me that they will be sharing new things soon. Trademark. I don't want you to take too much heed with that. It could be soon as in like very soon because they want to share stuff with people like concept art and stuff, or it could be soon as in between now and forever. You, you don't know what these things because it's game development. To give you a little bit of an idea on how little heed you can pay to a developer saying soon, I'm just going to give you this soul crushing information right here. This is the craft on pipeline. This is something you find in a financial report. You got to do a bit of digging for this, but it is on the internet. As we know, Unknown Worlds was obtained by Krafton, the parent company that owns PUBG and all kinds of stuff. And you can see Project M is right here. This is from Unknown Worlds. The target is 2022 for early access. Project M, I think, is Project Moonbreaker, which we found the trademark information for and, you know, all that stuff. Kind of exposed what I think is a top secret project, but that's okay because it's public information. I see nothing about mentioning Subnautica on this entire roadmap. From 2022 on the first half, to what I assume is late 2023, mid 2023. So I don't think we're actually going to see anything with Subnautica, uh, Subnautica 2, Subnautica 3 for at least another year, unless they just haven't included that in this roadmap because it might be a little bit outdated. I guess we'll know when we start getting the concept art for the next Subnautica. Speaking of concept art, I do want to go over this with you for a moment because I think it is fairly important. When the news broke of a new Subnautica game being developed by Unknown Worlds, a lot of content creators had actually seen this image on the website shown, but they didn't explore it. They didn't look into it, even though I think this is confirmed as concept art for Project M or Project Moonbreaker to what we understand. The second I saw this image, I said, oh, sh I said that because I instantly put my eyes on this and I said, what does that remind me of? Does that remind me of something in Subnautica already? Does it remind you of anything that's already in Below Zero? Because for me, this reminded me of the Trivalve. Granted, I know it's not an exact replica, but to me, that looks like the Trivalve. Now, hang on a second. Project M is an Unknown Worlds Entertainment game. Unknown Worlds has the Subnautica universe, which they've tied natural selection into. Unknown Worlds wants to create a universe centered around Subnautica. So when you add all of that together and the fact that to me personally, it may be, I want you to let me know in the comment section if you think I'm going down the rabbit hole a little bit too far. Because for me, I, I had a couple friends tell me that actually, but I think that this is a reference to the Trivalve. The coloring is too close. The shape, the general shape of it is too close. I think that Project Moonbreaker, Project M, is going to be tw entwined in the Subnautica universe. It is not the next Subnautica game, but I think that it's going to have some lore and something Thing to do with Subnautica. I also noticed while looking at this image, there is text that is fairly similar or even inspirationally driven through precursor text that we know exists. In the distance, this tower looks oddly similar to what you would see or expect from Altera. 
not to mention the giant blue planet here. Uh, the, the argument can be made there is some landmass right here. I think that this might just be a light cast of the sun behind the planet and just how it glows down, kind of similar to the ending of Subnautica. We see pretty well the exact color pattern from the sun cresting into the, the foreground, and you can see it, you know, what's behind the planet. You, you get the idea. Now, it could be a piece, big piece of land. I don't think we've actually seen all of 4546B. Uh, but anyways, th th clearly this planet is predominantly water from what we can see in the limited view that we can see. I tied this in a tiny bit more and I'm reaching a bit now, but because we have a robotic follower right here and we have a human, it appears to be a human at least, uh, with some glowing equipment and just the color pattern and the idea behind it, I feel is Subnautica related or Subnautica inspired. And I specifically said this robot because I remember in Below Zero, there was a cat that had a mechanical arm. So that signifies a very advanced technology. And this would also be very advanced technology. I don't think it's unrealistic. If you can give a, ro a cat a robot arm, well, then why can't you build the whole robot? Regardless, however loosely this may be connected to Subnautica or even may not be, you might not agree with me. At the end of the day, it is kind of a look at how human structures and human civilization may have progressed in the world. We saw architects, we saw pretty much what we had to see on the planets. We've already seen architect structures and how their architecture is actually created and how it looks. We have seen a little bit of human stuff, but that's like survival bases on a planet, not like an actual city or a human a human installation where like people actually live and, and do their daily lives there in a work in a non-work setting. Even down right here, I clearly see a face and that that screams Subnautica vibes to me. Just the art style of that and just how the character looks to me. But again, I, I could be an I could be completely off the wall here. I'm showing you this specifically so you can tell me if you see any similarities or if you think that I should probably not waste any more time on this because I've already put too much time into this image alone. I am really surprised these are still in the game. So I have the transfuser and the centrifuge. These are two things that go together. You gather DNA, as we know, using this right here. It doesn't have an animation anymore. I don't believe I'm going to just try it real quick on a fish. Oh. Oh yeah, it has an animation. It actually works. I was not expecting that. So I can actually inject this into myself or I can inject it into a creature. I'm sure it doesn't do anything right now. Yeah, I pressed E, it just, it doesn't, it, it just removes it from my hand. Oh, this, ha this is actually like somewhat coded. Whoa, hang on a second. Can I do this on a Reaper? Come here, you, let me, let me get your, let me get your juice. Nope, doesn't work on that. How about you? Can I do it to you? Oh, I got another one. Okay, excuse the mess. I wanted to play around with my new toy for a little bit. I didn't realize they actually had this coded. So if I press E to inject this, I will get protection. It doesn't work, however. If I press E to inject this, I get speed. So this is still surprisingly set up to a degree in the base game of Subnautica. This is reusable as hell. This doesn't have anything. I, I can't do anything with this, obviously, but the potential is there. And I have a lot more to branch into this. This was the most popular topic of my last Subnautica 3 theory video. And there was the transfuser and the idea of being able to take bioluminescence from maybe that guy up right there and put it into a reaper and give it bioluminescent like spots on its skin or inject it into yourself so then you yourself were a light. Maybe take DNA from gas. But you get the idea. It had a bunch of different special effects. You could mutate yourself and you could mutate other creatures around you. Again, I have more to branch out into that, but we also have the terraformer here. I don't think this actually works anymore. I would be very surprised if they did because they changed the way uh, the ground works in Subnautica. So I don't think you can actually dig up stuff anymore. No, you can't. But I would imagine this would be something they would want to use in multiplayer too, because, well, base building and being able to customize an open world is one of the most, it's one of the biggest selling points for a lot of games. But anyways, that's so cool about this. I didn't know that this still worked. I haven't tried this in, like, literally, I haven't looked at this in years. I just assumed they got rid of it. But the transfuser is still literally in-game. Not only that, you can take DNA from different fish. You can't, you can't inject them right now, and I can't inject it into myself, like I said, but it's still there. It's so sick. This doesn't have anything to do with what we were just talking about, but I did want to throw it into the video for a second because I noticed it on the wiki and I had not seen it before. It is a poster that says infinite. It was related to Subnautica because it was actually inside the game. You can't spawn it in the game world anymore. The image is super low resolution, so it's it's just very bad quality to look at right now on the video, but you can clearly make out either a life pod or some kind of land traversing vehicle inside of a massive rib cage, and then you see a planet in the background. Kind of makes me wonder if this is anything to do with 4546B and then the planet, like the 
moon that orbits it, basically. Just imagine Subnautica 3 is actually Subnautica Infinite. I guess anything's possible. Let me know what you think down below. The transfuser was probably the most talked about thing in the comment section of my last Subnautica 3 theory video when we explored the idea of what Charlie wanted to do in the past and how they move forward with those ideas and make future things happen with those said ideas. Charlie was massive on giving you the most he could possibly give you out of a gaming experience. Part of that was stuff that you could do that would either impact the environment, manipulate the environment, influence the environment, or, interact in, or interacting with creatures. Pretty well, he wanted you to be able to interact with these creatures and do different things with them. Not just have like fancy peepers floating around in the ocean or hoop fish. No, he wanted to make sure that you were able to actually engage with these creatures in a meaningful way and they had more of a utility and purpose within the game world than kind of just doing what they're doing now, which is swimming around. Funny enough, I'm pretty sure the version of this DNA sampler we have, the transfuser, in the current build of Subnautica is significantly more advanced than what's shown here. I also did a lot of sleuthing through the internet and I found some very old stuff from Charlie. He was basically trying to show us what he wanted to do with the environment and even offer a teaching moment for new game developers because Charlie is huge into that. He loves trying to help people find success and succeed in what they love doing. In this case, game development. Um, so it's much more general, general purpose. So this is just a quick proof of concept. But basically anything can send messages to anything else and it's all really uh, generic. I'm gonna pause it right there. Do you remember the hive mind in Subnautica Below Zero? Do you remember that? Do you remember how if you approach the hive mind, it would change colors and it's like it was able to communicate with the creatures next to it or whatever the hive mind is, they didn't really branch out on it more? You remember that, right? Well, that's that's basically a very small snippet of what the potential is when it comes to this system he wanted to put in place. I would imagine they're going to branch out on this more for the next Subnautica because proof is they branched out on it for below zero. So let's see. I'll just do some peepers. You'll see them. They'll make, they'll make all plants go into the ground. Obviously, we're not going to do this effect because it looks really ugly. But uh, you see, oh, there's this one. Oh, there they go. Scared, scanning, scaring those into the ground. There's, I'm not using any colliders or anything like that. It's all, um, it's actually much more simple and efficient. So let me just spawn some whole fish. Um, and then actually they, they look at the mass of the object doing it. So if I do like a stalker, they'll actually scare them at a bigger radius. Um, it's actually a very simple, very efficient kind of non-physics-y. Oh, then let's see. So I did something to like these special mushrooms when they take damage. They basically alert the other mushrooms to like self-destruct. They just do a, they do a little bit of damage to each other. So let's see here. They start doing damage to nearby ones. They set up chain reactions. 